Islanders are feeling proud again, thanks to this Labour and Coalition Government. The Honourable Mark Mitchell. Mr Speaker, I would have been I would have been far prouder, I would have been far prouder as a Kiwi with our Prime Minister visiting uh, the UN if she had gone up there and said that our New Zealand Defence Forces deployed to South Sudan on a very difficult peacekeeping mission were actually getting the support that they need from New York and the United Nations. I would have been far prouder if that had been on the top of her agenda and she had actually addressed issues like that. The, 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 Labor, the Labor Party, this, this, this coalition, this coalition, this coalition um, government is in big trouble because what, what's happening is, well, you, might, you might think it's funny, what's, what's happening is that you're not listening. You're actually not listening. Let me give you a clear example of that. Because uh, I'm very proud that as an electorate MP for my electorate of Rodney, as I hold uh, constituent clinics. And I want to share some observations in terms of the type of um, constituent meetings I've been having over the last uh, three or four weeks. I've had three business people come in and see me that I would never have seen come to the office when we were in government. And they wanted to come and see me. They have no political affiliation. They're small to medium-sized business people. And they're very concerned about the policies and the uncertainty that, these, that this government is signalling. And these are people that actually have to make uh, a punt sometimes. Uh, the, their main uh, concern in life is, make, is cash flow and being able to make payroll um, every week or, or every fortnight and they're very, very concerned about the signals that are coming from this government around um, uh, industrial relations, around some of the policies that they've already passed that transfers the risk from the government back into their businesses. That is going to have an effect. So th this is a government that is not listening. They are not listening to this sort of feedback. I went and visited uh, Wentworth College, a college in my electorate the other day, year nine students. Go and, go and, go and fact check this if you want to. Go and fact check this if you want. The first, the first thing they raised with me was regional fuel tax. Do you know why? And, and, and this is the arrogance of this government, is because they will not listen to the actual people that their policies are affecting. So you want to get out there, Mr McInulty, and you actually need to start talking to people and you need to start listening. Order. Because Order. you're... Sorry, sorry, Mr Speaker. Because the policies of this government are starting to have a negative impact of the people that you're meant to be governing for. And, 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 I'll, and not only did so, I had, so I had year nine students at a college raising the issues around regional fuel tax. And then I had a delegation, then I had a delegation of senior Kiwis, older ladies that came in and said that actually the regional fuel tax and the cost of fuel is starting to severely impact on what they're doing. They live in an area that doesn't have a strong uh, public uh, transport system. They're all older, they're senior retired Kiwis and they're having to carpool and they're having to find other ways of getting around. Because the, 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 uh, the cost of fuel is starting to bite. This is happening. I had, uh, uh, I had the uh, trucking companies and transport companies uh, uh, gather in my electorate in Silverdale to actually protest, to drive through, to drive. Sorry, what's that? I'm not proposing a fuel subsidy. What I'm proposing is this. And actually, the Greens, you should be lobbying because if you're listening, if you're, if you're coming to this House to advocate for the people that you say that you support, then go and talk to your coalition partners and tell them the one thing that they can do, the one thing that they can do to make a difference in people's lives, is remove the regional fuel tax. They, they, don't, they don't control... They don't, I, I acknowledge that the government doesn't control the price of oil. You know, it, doesn't have, it does have a little bit of control when you see our dollar starting to drop because the, dollar is, is, the weakness in the dollar reflects the lack of confidence in the economy. But these are actually the things that they do control. I had, I had a constituent of mine that came to me before the election. Her husband is a, is a proud serving officer in the New Zealand Defence Forces. She has a rare disease and she, wanted, she was seeking more funding. She had gone to the Labor Party, Mr Clark, who had given her a commitment. Someone in the Labor Party had given her a commitment. She came back to me. She had been a strong national supporter. She said, I'm going to have to give my support to Labor because they're going to invest money into, they, they're going to invest money into rare diseases through Pharmac. That's what she was told. Guess what she's got? Guess what she's got, Mr McInulty? Nothing. Zero from you. That's your proud, that's your proud um, uh, result that you can stand on. And, and I'd say to Mr um, Clark, Put the 200 million back into Pharmac and start funding some medication for rare diseases. That's what I'd say on behalf of my constituent, because you pulled the wool over your eyes, and that was a cruel thing to do 
from a young mum who is actually trying to find the money and the funding to be able to keep her going and, and supporting her family. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr. David Clark. Mr. Speaker, uh, I, I need at the outset just to, to correct something.